Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you everything you need to know in order to have a successful fall gardening season. So I'm going to say some things about it, and then I'm going to take you outside and show you my exact setup for starting the, the seeds up and that you can replicate. And then we will come back in and I will tell you exactly what varieties you can plant and when for the best results. So the fall garden, contrary to the way that it sounds, is actually planted in the summertime. It just ripens and comes to maturity in the fall time. So there are what we call uh, heat loving and cold hardy uh, vegetables. The heat loving stuff are the plants that will die if there is even one frost at all. These are tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, squash, eggplants, corn, basil, those kind of things. They love the heat and we grow it during the middle of summer. But then there is the cold hardy stuff. This is going to be all of your brassicas and this is the uh, also peas, uh, cabbages, uh, kale, collard greens, all these kind of things. And they not only can they tolerate frost, they actually become better with frost because um, the plant knows that as the temperature is getting colder, that sugar water freezes at a lower temperature than regular water. And so in order to protect the plant tissue or the roots of the beet or the carrot or the leaves of the collard green or the cabbage, whatever it is, in order to protect that, the plant will convert a lot of its starches to sugars so that uh, it won't be damaged by the frost. And this is what we say that the plants get sweeter with a few frosts after they've been kissed by the coldness. This is very true with peas and especially, especially peas, but cabbages also, as well as all the root crops, beets, carrots, daikon radish, they're all better uh, as the cold is coming. So the fall garden, successful fall garden is all about timing and there are plants that you, as you will see when we come back in, I will show you. Uh, there are certain plants that you start up uh, and then there are certain plants that you direct seed. And so for the plants that we have to start up, here it is guys, I'm going to simplify it big time, okay? This is relevant for zones 4, 5, 6, and 7. Outside of those zones, the timing is going to be a bit different. But in zone 4 through 7, uh, the things that we need to start by seed, we start July 1st, give or take a week or so, depending on your zone. If you're in zone, see, I'm in zone 5 slash 6. And so our first frost is October 9th. So 100 days before that is going to be uh, July 1st. And so that's perfect timing to start up everything. All right. So if you're in cooler zones, then, uh, you know, advance it by a week or two. If you're in the warmer zones, you can wait a week or two. But for the most part, this is going to be the ideal timing. Uh, so we're going to start the seeds July 1st, give or take, and we're going to plant them in the ground August 1st, give or take a week or so. And uh, August 1st, give or take a week is also when we're going to plant the stuff that we direct sow. So let us get into it. I will take you outside, show you how to set up the environment for the seeds, and then we'll come back in and I'll explain everything you need to know. Okay, first thing we want to do is set up a nice area with a shade cloth or something similar. Now, this is 40% shade cloth. Now, the 70 to 90%, that's too much. And so I just pound in some T-posts and zip tie the shade cloth to it. And that is going to give us a nice area that is not going to be blazing sun because the little seedlings don't like that. So we're going to set up our area here and that's going to be our rain barrels and our uh, compost tea maker. All that stuff's going to be right here. Uh, so the one gallon pots that you see here, these are going to be for things that are uh, like the cabbages, especially the Brunswick cabbage. We want those to be nice and big by the time we put those in. So for all the leafy greens like the mustard, you'll see in a moment, uh, we can put them into these uh, pint solo cups. So here I've already started like shijimisa, uh, Chinese cabbage, collard greens. I need to thin those immediately. Uh, but here's a little bit of uh, the tour. You can see the um, uh, sweet potatoes are starting to really pop right now. They're looking nice and big and healthy. Don't forget, you can eat the sweet potato leaves. Now, something I want to show you guys is the basil. So remember to have bushy basil, pinch off the growing tips, and it will become a bush like this. But it is almost time that it's going to start set seed. So we are going to harvest all of this stuff and make pesto with it, with pine nuts and, and all the good stuff. Some garlic scapes, fermented garlic scapes, so that we can freeze it for the wintertime. But here's the secret, guys. I already have some more gar uh, basil started. And as you can see, I accidentally mixed up some purple basil in there, but it's going to be all right. So that's going to go right into its place. 
Now, here are some summer savory, guys. You still got time to plant the summer savory, and it will be delicious midwinter because you can dehydrate it. It's delicious. Here we have the uh, beets, which we succession sow. So every time that you pull a beet to use it, you put a new beet seed in its place. Uh, and uh, that is going to ensure that you have a supply all the way up until few weeks past frost then we got the carrots and all the good stuff in this nice fluffy soil okay now here we have the hedgerow of the german butterballs which i'll show you in a minute but now look at the onions and the onions is where we are going to plant our fall one of our fall crops because the onions just started to bulb here the long day onions after the solstice that's when they start to bulb and so guys see i don't get too hung up about dandelions in the garden because they are really beneficial more like a living mulch so uh these are just starting to bulb and they are going to be ready in about three weeks from now and that's where we're going to plant a lot of our uh fall stuff also over here you can see the garlic that should have been harvested days ago um but it's being protected by a vicious predator. So we are going to uh, go ahead and harvest one of these for you guys just so that we can see. And I'm going to use my uh, garlic harvesting sword tool right here. And uh, this one, I'm going to be I'm going to be pretty happy with this one, actually, because it's nice and plump and it's about the size of a baseball, give or take. And this thing is going to be nice and pungent, full of the sulfuric compounds that will make our eyes water midwinter. It's like a a medicine super good so i'm happy with this garlic and the garlic is where we are going to put a lot of our stuff because it's about to be harvested so that's where we'll put beets and green beans now here is the yukon gold potatoes which as you can see by looking at the leaves is pretty much perfect right now so they are going to be ready in about another 30 40 days and so we can uh pull them and replant something else maybe the cabbages will go in there or maybe more of these collard greens you see the collard greens here i've been eating these for days super good soft and buttery now here is the hedgerow of the grow bags from the video that i made and here these are german butterball they are loving life but i got them on a drip line guys and that is the secret Okay, so now you have the area set up. These things I'm about to show you are things that we will start up because we want to plant these into the ground with a nice head start. The number one is going to be the cabbages, guys. So the, uh, the Brunswick cabbage is my number one fall cabbage because it is really big and it is very cold hardy. I mean, mine gets snow on top of them and they're still fine. They just get sweeter and better. So if you're into sauerkraut, the Brunswick cabbage can't be beat. Uh, but it takes a long time, so you want to start it up in, in those one-gallon pots. Uh, as opposed to the Gloria Weinkusen, this one is much faster, uh, matures much faster. So if you're getting a later start, you do the Gloria Weinkusen because they're smaller heads and they mature a bit faster. Next thing is the Chinese cabbage, and the Golden Beauty is the most nutrient-dense of all the Chinese cabbage. We uh, use this for the um, Japanese hot pot soup, the Chanko Nabe, also for kimchi. So we're going to start this up. Also, kale, if you haven't already, start it up. Also, collard greens, the uh, Georgia Southern. These type are my favorite. I love the buttery flavor of the collard greens. It only gets better in the wintertime. Also, the uh, mustard greens. Also, the purple giant mustard greens. Uh, any of the lettuces, any of that kind of stuff. The leafy greens, the old Tokyo Komatsuna, Kamatsu, you know, like these type of things. Uh, oh, yes, and the Shijimisa. All of the things you just seen are going to be stuff that you want to start July 1st, give or take, to plant out August 1st, give or take. Okay, but now here are the things that you are going to plant directly into the ground August 1st, give or take a week or so, depending on your zone. Uh, these are going to be peas, okay guys, the peas. Now, with peas, it's so important for the, the successful fall harvest that you look for ones that say dwarf variety. Read the description, it says... 55 days delightful dwarf variety matures early okay they only get a foot or two tall that that is because we want them to focus on producing the uh fruit you know the peas we don't want them to spend so much time getting six foot tall and building all that infrastructure like the tall you know peas in in the uh, springtime so we're going to get dwarf peas the sugar bond is a very good snap you can eat the whole thing nice and sweet especially after a frost the Lillian's caseload is the kind that I run through my pea sheller, and uh, this is the kind that you shell, and then you can freeze or can the peas. Next thing is going to be the root crops, guys. The root crops love a frost. The Japanese daikon radish. These get huge. We make the kimchi with it. We also put it into the Japanese hot pot type soups. 
Next thing is gonna be the beets, guys. Bull's blood and cylindra are my two favorites. These are great for juicing. These are great for putting on the grill. Yes, I said it and it's delicious. Put the cast iron over the grill and sear them super hot. Let me know if you wanna see a video on how to do that, how to grill the greens. That sounds like a good video. Next is gonna be the carrots. So guys, these are my favorite kind of carrots. Actually, this is one that I'm just trying for the first time from Fruition Seeds. So I don't know yet, I'm looking forward to it. But these two, I love. Now this one, uh, the Kyoto Red, is a good if you have a nice, soft, fluffy place for carrots. Because carrots like a nice, soft, fluffy. They don't like to hit clay and stuff like that. So this is the best tasting of all, in my opinion, if you've got the soil properly prepared. But if you don't, then go for the new Karuda. And that's going to, these are much shorter and more stout, but they can power through the, uh, the clay and stuff like that. So if you don't have ideal soil for carrots, which is soft and fluffy and full of nutrients, then go for the Karuda. Now here are some honorable mentions, guys. Not in the sense that they are frost hardy, because they're not, because they will absolutely die if there's a frost but in the sense that you still got time. So you can still plant some bush green beans. Forget about pole beans, they spend too much time putting up the infrastructure. But you still got time to plant a run of bush green beans. Also, some of the quick maturing cucumbers, all right? China Jade, Market More, you can still plant, but don't mess around because the clock is ticking, my friends. Okay, so there you go. I think that you have all the knowledge you need in order to succeed. Put it in the comments what varieties of stuff you are planting and your experience with the fall garden. Also, read through the comments because there is a lot of good knowledge in the comments from all you guys. So if you feel like you gained something from the video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone that needs the knowledge. Uh, also, check out the Garden Like a Viking Instagram account and tag me. Use the hashtag Garden Like a Viking so you can show me your stuff and mention me at Garden Like a Viking so I can see your gardens. I love that. And don't forget, every Saturday, 12 noon Eastern time, right here, we have a live Q&A session. Bring all your garden-related questions and we can have a chat.